Hello, my dear students. So let's continue our discussion on modular arithmetic and its application. So here we are going to see, or I am going to show you in this video lecture, how to do addition, subtraction, and multiplication in modular arithmetic. So just in the case of regular arithmetic, we are still going to do the regular operation. So involving the, the plus and the minuses and the in the times but in this case aside from doing that we still have to divide it by the modulus and again our answer is not the quotient but the remainder so just just a side note just an important note here to check if your answer is correct so the result of your arithmetic operation in modular n or in modulo n rather the patlagging yung answer mo is less than uh, the end. So, for example, if you're doing an arithmetic in modulo uh, 7, your answers in your operation, in your arithmetic operation, should be less than 7. So, it can be um, 0 or 1, 2, until 6. Okay po, just to check if your answer is correct. So, let's start with addition. Addition modulo n. So, here is an example. So we have to add first the the addends inside the parentheses. Ano po? So we have a 23 plus 38, and we are doing uh, an arithmetic in modulo 12, a mod 12 arithmetic. So 23 plus 38, mod 12, modulo 12. So what we do here first is to add the 23 and the 38 as shown here. So that would be 61. Modulo 12. So what you should do next is to divide 61, the sum, by 12, since that's, that is the modulus. So shown here is the division. And the answer is, the quotient is 5, but that's not your answer. Your answer is the remainder. So you will say that 61 modulo 12 is equivalent to 1. Okay? So that's how you will do your um, addition modulo n. Let's have an example. So here we have 51 plus 72, and we are solving in uh, the modulo 3, in, or in the mod 3 arithmetic, using the modulo 3. So 51 plus 72 is 123 modulo so we need to divide 123 by 3. So 3 times 4, that's 12. So 12 minus 12, that's 0. Let's bring down 3. Now 3 divided by 3, that's 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So our remainder is 0. So 123 modulo 3 is equivalent to 0. Okay, so that's how you will perform your addition in modular arithmetic. Now, here is an important property in modular arithmetic. So, in regular arithmetic, whenever we add 0 to a number, the result is still a number. It's still, it's still the number, rather. So, for example, 8 plus 0 is, is still equal to 8. No? Or negative 8 plus 0 is, is still equal to negative 8. So 0 will not change, will not add, or will not subtract, will not change the value. Okay po. In modular arithmetic, how do we do this? What numbers do we add to, to another number such that hindi magbabago yung value niya? Okay? So starting, these are two examples. Example A and example B. Let's take a look at the first line here on example A. So we have a 13 is congruent to 6 modulo 7. So let's check if the congruence is correct or is true. So 13 divided by... So we have a 13 is congruent to 6 modulo 7. Again, what we need to do to confirm if the congruence is true is to divide 13 by 7 and 6 by 7 and check if their remainders are equal to each other. So 13 divide 7. So I think the answer would be 1. 
at the 7 times 2, that's already 14. So quotient of 1, remainder of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 13. So remainder of 6. Now 6, you cannot divide by 7. So quotient of 0, the remainder already is 6. So here we can confirm that this particular congruence is actually true. So what we did here is we add the modulus since we are working uh, at uh, mod 7 arithmetic or in mod 7 arithmetic, our modulus is 7. So if we add 7 to 13, that would result to 20. And according to the property, hindi daw magbabago yung value ng number of the number. That means we will still be getting the same remainder. The congruence will still be correct. So 20 divide 7, 7 times 3 is already 21. So the quotient here is 2. So counting from 14 to 20, that's 6. So remainder of 6. So that's correct. It didn't change the value and the part of the number. It didn't uh, make the congruence false. The congruence is still true. It still holds up. When we add 7, by 20 or to 20, we will get 27 if we divide that by 7. So again, 7 times 3, that's 21. So the quotient is 3. The distance between 21 and 27 is 6. That's our remainder. So still, the congruence is still true. So it would be as if we are adding uh, 0. No, in regular arithmetic, it will be as if we are adding 0. To the number since it is not changing its value since it is not making the congruence false okay po. shown here is another example so we have 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 3 so 1 you cannot divide by 3 so your quotient is 1 your remainder is already 1 10 divide 3 3 times 3 is 9 so our quotient is 3 remainder of 1. So we're looking for a remainder of 1. We are looking for 1 as, as, as our answer in this modular arithmetic. 13 divide 3. If we add 10 by 3, that would be 13. Let's check if we divide it by 3, if it's still correct. 3, 6, 9, 12. So the quotient is 4, modulo 1. Okay? So again, if we, if we add the, the modulus, to a number, it will not change the value of that number. That's that's the property in modular arithmetic. Why are we talking about this? Because this will be useful here in subtraction. Subtraction modulo n. So there are two cases in subtraction. One is if you will get a positive result, and the other if you will get a negative result. So shown here is the process if you will get a positive result. So in letter A, we will subtract 33 by 16 and we will get 17. So that's a positive result. When you're getting a positive result, you just do as you did in addition. So you do, you do the division. So here, since we are working in modulo 6 or in mod 6 arithmetic, what we need to divide 17 by is 6. So 17 divided by 6, you will get a remainder of 5. So our answer here is 5. So just the regular process. But the story will, the process will be changed a little bit if you are getting a negative answer. So remember in algebra, no, um, if you will take the sign of the larger value, in this case 27 is bigger than 14. So since 27 is larger and it is negative, your answer is or will be negative as well. So 14 minus 27, that is negative 13. The result is negative. So what will you do here? If you have a negative answer, you will not proceed to the division. Instead, you will do the continuous addition. So here, we are working in modulo 5 arithmetic. So 14 minus 27, 
modulo 5. So our modulus is 5. A while ago, we showed that if we add the modulus to the number, it will not change the value. So we can also do that here. So starting from negative 13, since that's our answer in the subtraction, we just add 5 continuously until we get the first positive whole number. So negative 13 plus 5, that's negative 8. That's still negative. Let's continue adding 5. Adding 5 to that, it's negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5, that's 2. Now, when we get the first positive whole number, that's already our answer. Okay, so 14 minus 27, modulo 5, is equivalent to 2. Okay, po. So that's the two cases when, when we are doing subtraction. And for each case, different yung strategy na gagawin mo. Now, let's have a little bit of, of, of practice. So we have 43 minus 21 here. So 43 uh, minus 21. So 2, 2, we take the sign of the, of the bigger or the larger number, which is 43. So negative 22 modulo 7. Now we have to add 7 to 20, negative 22 continuously until we get the whole number, the first whole number, which would be positive. So negative 15 plus 7, negative 8, negative 8 plus 7. So that's negative 1. Negative 8 is larger than 7. Still, let's do the last one. Negative 1 plus 7, that would be 6. So the answer here is 6. Okay. How about in multiplication? So in multiplication, the same process. You just have to multiply the operation inside the parentheses and divide that by the modulus. So 15 times 23 is 15. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 1 is 3. 4. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. 3. So 3, 4. Two. Okay, just verifying this one. After you get the product, you divide by the modulus, which is 11. You will get a quotient of 31 and the remainder of 4, which is our answer, 4. 15 times 23 modulo 11 is equivalent to 4. Let's do this one, 33 times 41, solving in um, mod 17 arithmetic. So 33 times 41. Okay, 33 times 41, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12 again, plus 1, 13. So 3, 5, 3, and 1. So 1,353 modulo 17. Now let's divide that by 17, the product, to get our answer. Okay, what's 17 times 5? 17 times 5 is 35. Three, 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3, 85. 17 times 7, 7 times 7, 49. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 4, 119. 7 times 8, 7 times 8. 8 is 56. 8 times 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 136. Okay, so labis na siya. Let's do 17 times 7, which is 119. So 135 minus 119, that would be 16. Kulang ulit. Let's bring down 3. Let's check 17 times 9. 17 times 9 is 153. 153. So the answer, the remainder is 10. So that's it. You can't divide 10 by 17 anymore. So 1,353 
modulo 17 is equivalent to 10. Okay, let's let me check just check that um, quickly. 1353 divide 17. Okay, that's correct. Okay, we can also apply um, the multiplication in modular arithmetic process in solving congruence equations. So we need to find um, the value of a whole number which will make a congruence true. So for example, we have, this is an example of a, of a problem. So we have an x variable here. So 3x plus 5 is equivalent or is congruent to 3 modulo 4. So what we need to find here is what value will we substitute to x? What value will we substitute to x and then multiply that by 3? And then add 5 to that such that um, when we divide it by 4, since our modulo is 4, the, the remainder will be 3. Okay? Why, why sir? Why, why, why are we looking for a remainder of 3? Remember, when we are dealing with congruence, this side of the equation, let's say this is A and then this is B. If we divide A and B by 4, we will have the same remainder for the congruence to be true. So since 3 divided 4, that's, that's not possible. So quotient of 0, remainder of 3 already. We are looking for this side of the equation, dito sa A, to be also equivalent to a remainder of 3, to also have a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. So paano yung gagawin natin? We will start with the smallest whole number, which will be 0. We will be doing a trial and error, so to speak. Ano po? So 3, here x is 0. 3 times 0, that's of course 0. So you are left with 5. So that is actually 5. It's congruent to 3 modulo 4. Now 5 equal, divided by 4 is 1, remainder 1. So that's not 3. So this is not a congruent. You also say that 0 is not a solution. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5, that's 8. Can we check if that's, we'll have a remainder of 3 if divided by 4? No, because 8 divided by 4 is 2. We don't have a remainder. Remainder of 0. So you will say that 1 is not a solution. Now, can we check if we put 2, will it satisfy the congruence? So, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5, it's 11. Is, it, is congruent to 3? Sorry, this one is not congruent. Modulo of 4. So, 11 divided by 4, 4, 8. Quotient of 2. Remainder of 9, 10, 11. Remainder of 3, ayun. So, we found... We found the, the, the solution. 2 is a solution. And we also see here that 6 is also a solution. Why? Since 6 times 3 is 18 plus 5 is congruent to 3 modulo 4. 18 plus 5 is 23. Yes, 23. If we divide it by 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 21. So it's going to be 6 times 4. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's... 4 times 5 rather. 4 times 5 is 20. And the distance between 20 and 3, 23 is 3. So the remainder will be 3. So 6 indeed is also a solution to the congruence. So what's the technique, sir? Do I have to do that 
for all whole numbers starting from 0 until, until infinity. Hindi po. So, you just have to look at your modulus. Your modulus here is 4. So, you just do your trial and error from x is equal to 1, 2, and 3. Check for all the whole numbers less than 4. So, ang mga whole numbers less than 4 is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, that means you will have to do 4 trial and error. So, what about the other numbers? Kasi di ba dito, sir, we, we were able to find that 6 is also a solution. So, your strategy will be just to add 4 to that whole number na nakita mo na solution siya. So, 2, you just add 4 to that. 2 plus 4 is 6. Add another uh, 4 to 6. That would be 10. Add another 4. That would be 14. So these are your solution and so on. Let's check if indeed 10 is, is really a solution. Um, this is 30 plus 5. 35 divided by 4. 4, 8, 12, 16. What's 35 divided by 4? 4 times 8, which is 32. So, remainder again of 3. So, that's how you will be able to find the other solutions. Okay po? Okay, now here, we have a, a longer trial and error. Because you have to check all of the values. Ano po? Less than the modulo. So, we have a 2x plus 1 is congruent to 3 modulo 10. 3 modulo 10, so that means 3 divided 10. We are looking for a remainder of 3 on this side of the equation, if divided by 10. So modulo 10, that means x, I will substitute 0 to 9 to the x on, on this side, here in 2x plus 1. So here, we they verified it from 0 to 9, and we saw that 1 and 6 are solutions. Kasi po, there are cases that there are two solutions within the within the whole numbers, less than the modulo. Ano po? So you really have to check each of them, if each of them is a solution. So since 1 and 6 is a solution, we just have to add the modulus to them. 1 plus 10 is 11 to check for the other solution. 6 plus 10 is 16. 11 plus 10 is 21. 16 plus 10 is 26. And so on. Here are the other solutions to the congruence equation. Now, how about this case? Now, if there is a case kung saan there are two solutions, two or more, two or more solutions, ano po, not only one, there are cases when there are no solutions to the congruence. So we here, here we have a 5x plus 1 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. So we are looking for a remainder of 3. And we have to check for x. We have to substitute the values 0 to 4 to x. And that is done here. So dito nakita natin that all of them is not a solution to the congruence. For example, here, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1, that's 11, if divided by 5, that would be a remainder of 1. A quotient of 2, remainder of 1. So that's not 3, that's not a remainder of 3, so that's not a solution. So all of them is not a solution. So you will just say, after showing the calculation, you will just say there are no solution to the congruence. Okay?